Hi, good evening, and welcome to the eighth and final edition of the current round of Sundays with Apollo. I'm Fred Child coming to you from my makeshift home radio studio in my apartment building in New York City with this very nice looking microphone, which I'm not using at the moment, but it makes a great visual prop, don't you think? I've got to figure out how to plug this nice mic into my phone one of these days. I'm lucky to be the host of Performance Today. It's a two hour daily show on public radio stations coast to coast, celebrating the vitality and creativity of today's classical music scene in concert, on stage. And about six years ago, this group from Houston began sending us their concert recordings, the Apollo Chamber Players. I fell in love with their stuff immediately. Fascinating wide range of music, lots and lots of new commissions from living composers, all so well played, world-class performances and terrific recordings. A, a real treat to share lots of their recordings. Really been enjoying their 20 by 2020 commission series, which is just wrapping up. Can't wait to see what's next from them. My favorites in, uh, well, just the past couple of months that we've shared, the old minimalist chestnut from the 1960s by Terry Riley in C with the twist of an Indian classical instrument in the mix. The Chitravina plus the Indian hand drums, the Murdungam. Really great performance of In C by Terry Riley. All the music by Malik Jandali, the Syrian-American composer living in exile, sharing the wealth of his cultural heritage through his new compositions. And the Apollo Chamber players have been at the forefront of bringing the music of the great American composer Florence Price back to the prominence it has always deserved. So with that history in mind, I can't wait to see what's coming next from our friends at the Apollo Chamber Players. And when Matt asked me to introduce tonight's episode of Sundays with Apollo, I of course said yes, my pleasure. Can't wait to see what's next from the Apollo Chamber Players and from the coziness of my home studio here in New York City. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this event along with you. Let's go right over now to our friends at Apollo in Houston. Hello, Fred, and thank you so much for your gracious welcome. We've been fans of performance today for many years now, and it's an honor for our performances, particularly our commissions, to be featured alongside, alongside some of the world's greatest talent. As a musical token of appreciation, I thought we'd begin tonight's show with one of the performances and composers uh, Fred mentioned as his favorite. Here is our 2016 performance of Piano Dream by Syrian American composer and pianist Malik Chandali.
Well, we hope that you enjoy Piano Dream, which was the program's encore from our Peace and Protest concert. This evening, we have a very special season finale, Sundays with Apollo, curated for you. I'm Matt Dietrich, director of Apollo Chamber Players and one of its violinists. I'm Annabelle Ramirez Dietrich, and I also play the violin. And we have Whitney Bullock, our violist, and our cellist, Matthew Dudzik, also joining us. Say hi, guys. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Can't believe it's been eight weeks in a row, guys. Let's do this last one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We invite you to invite your friends to like our Facebook page and also to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's also a great idea to host a watch party with your Facebook friends community. We are delighted to announce our 2021 concert season, Pathways of Renewal. Our 13th season of bold and innovative programming will explore the ways in which music and art profoundly reflect our personal and shared human experiences. From celebrations and migrations to pandemics and our intimate connectedness with the natural world. To begin this evening, we are thrilled to collaborate with the world's preeminent electric violinist, Tracy Silverman. Among other honors, he premiered the electric violin concerto, The Dharma at Big Sur, by Pulitzer Prize winning composer, John Adams. This landmark work was commissioned by the Los Angeles Philharmonic and written expressly for Tracy, who premiered this with the LA Philharmonic at the gala opening of Walt Disney Hall, Concert Hall in 2003. We are pleased to welcome Tracy to introduce a little something we digitally recorded this past week and to talk about our upcoming collaboration. Hey, it's Tracy Silverman. I'm so thrilled to be playing with my friends in the Apollo Chamber Players again. Uh, here we are playing a piece of mine from my second electric violin concerto. It's a piece that I wrote for electric violin and string quartet. Uh, this is a movement called Matisse La Danse. This is from a concerto called Between the Kiss and the Chaos. It's five movements. Each movement is inspired by a great work of art. This was inspired by Matisse's La Danse. It's the painting of the five characters um, holding hands and dancing around in a circle. And uh, we had a, an opportunity to play together, uh, myself and the Apollo Chamber Players, several years ago. Uh, we did a, uh, a concert in San Antonio as part of the Youth Orchestra of San Antonio Summer Program. Uh, and we've been looking for an opportunity to play together ever since. And the Apollo Chamber Players came up with an opportunity this September 25th. We're going to be performing together some new music that's written for electric violin and string quartet by a wonderful American composer named Kimo Williams, who's got a, a really interesting story uh, and is a fascinating composer. And he's going to be writing a new piece for us for a concert September 25th coming up. Uh, to celebrate the 250th birthday of Ludwig van Beethoven. Uh, and chemo has got an idea of using uh, different periods of Beethoven's life in this piece. Uh, and I'm going to be uh, playing a solo looping version of a uh, movement from Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. And uh, we're going to put it all together um, and perform it for you on September 25th. So I hope you come out to see that in Houston. Uh, and in the meantime, enjoy Matisse La Danse.
We hope you enjoyed Matisse La Dance with Tracy. And as Tracy announced, we will com be commissioning a new work from American composer Kimo Williams for our season opening program this September. We are honored to have Kimo joining us live this evening for our broadcast. Hey, Kimo, Hello. how are you doing? Hey, hey I'm doing, doing great. Thank you. I'm doing great. How are you doing and from where are you joining us? I'm in West Virginia. I moved here from Chicago in 2015. I'm on the banks of the Potomac River overlooking, uh, I'm on a cliff overlooking the Potomac River and I'm inspired to write music every day. So this is great. Cool. Well, we're so happy to be uh, commissioning from you. Um, could you talk a little bit about, you know, have you been uh, composing during this stay at home and pandemic and have you been felt inspired by anything in particular? Other than well, our Matt, piece? <laughs> Yeah, well, I think mainly it's been your piece, but I've also uh, got it, uh, you know, being at home all the time, you're, you're constantly now uh, thinking of uh, more opportunities to write. So where you used to have to set a time aside and say, uh, I need to set some time aside to write. Now I'm actually, you know, the time is coming to me and it's saying, write, 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 write. So uh, other than your piece, I'm writing a new uh, country western song uh, about how we all need to come together and it's called My Country. I'm uh, really getting into my uh, photography and taking more pictures uh, along the Potomac River here in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. And uh, I'm just relaxing with my wife and uh, every once in a while I get to talk to my daughter on the phone. And Kimo, I know I think something that's very unique about you is that you are a Vietnam veteran. Uh, you, you spent a little time in Vietnam, but you took your guitar and you played instead of you know, shooting a gun or um, <laughs> I think did, I did did both. Creative, but just, so can you talk a little bit about, about, about your background and, and then what motivated you to become a composer? Oh, wow. Yes. Well, you know, 1969, I grew up in Hawaii and from high school, I went to a concert and I saw Jimi Hendrix for the very first time. Saw him live. And this was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. And I said, wow, what he can do with a guitar to speak to the people and to the audience like he did that day, that night, that is, was uh, just amazing. And I said, that's what I want to do. I want to use music as a way to express myself, as a way to, as a way to talk to people. So the very next day, I actually joined the Army and uh, was sent to Vietnam. I had actually thought I was going to join and uh, not go to Vietnam because I joined instead of got drafted. However, uh, first place I went was Vietnam. And while I was there, I was a combat engineer. And as a combat engineer, my job was to go out into the field and, and uh, we were clearing land uh, so that the infantry would come in. Every once in a while, we could come back from the field and we would have what they call R&R, &R, rest and recuperation. And during that time, we'd go to a little service club and you can pick up a guitar and you can kind of uh, let all the, the bugs out and just kind of play your guitar and relax. One day, somebody heard me playing and said, you know, we need some soldiers with, to go out and play for the troops on the front lines, but you need to take your M16 and take your guitar. So uh, I had an opportunity while I was in Vietnam uh, to put a band together and then I would tour Vietnam also for 30 days and I would go out to the front lines and actually play uh, some music for uh, the Marines out there in Da Nang and Way and places like that. And one of the things I got from that was the sense of really how powerful music is in a way to help people to uh, have a sense of home. So uh, that was very special to me. And ever since then, I, I, I look at music as a way to uh, express myself, but at the same time to communicate with the people uh, around me. So that, and that was in 1969. I came back in 1970 and uh, used a GI Bill. I went to Berkeley College of Music, did that for uh, four years. Then I taught there for two years and then I moved. Then I met my wife who was a saxophone player, a very good saxophone player. Well, she wasn't that good at that time, but she got very, very good. And, um, and then we got together and decided to move to Chicago uh, where she grew up. And um, I moved to Chicago and was teaching at Columbia College in Chicago. And, uh, I could go on and on, but uh, that kind of gives you an idea. Thank you, Kimo. Well, we can discuss a little bit more about our upcoming commission project in a few moments, but first let's hear our 2018 performance of your Into the Liquid String Quartet. Could you please set Great. this up for our viewers? Yes. Um, I think it was about in 2012, the Ethel Quartet out of New York uh, contacted me and they were already playing a piece of mine called Quiet Shadows. And uh, they asked me if I would be interested in uh, uh, writing a piece in reference to uh, Doc America uh, in the 1970s. 
um, uh, I think it was the EPA Commission photographers to go around the country and take pictures about uh, the world that we live in. And one of the, and then uh, talking with Ralph Ferris, uh, part of the Ethel, uh, they wanted us as a composer to use these images to find inspiration to, uh, to come up with a piece. As I looked at the images, uh, one of the things that really struck me and the images that really struck me were all had water attached to them. And as I looked at the water and the images, I started to think about my life. And when I look at my life, I realized that in a lot of uh, specifics of where I've been, because I've been to uh, in uh, a lot of places, my dad was in the Air Force where we did a lot of traveling. So I realized that water was significant uh, as it relates to who I am as a person, from being in New York, going to uh, um, Coney Island, to going to Hawaii, the Pacific Ocean, and in Vietnam, Comrade, uh, comrade um, um, I can't even remember, Cameron Bay, and um, uh, the, the, the uh, Black Sea, uh, and down in um, Louisiana when I was down there with my dad and, and the Gulf of Mexico. So all of this, this water uh, sort of inspired me to see if I could connect my music to uh, the, the, the essence of the water. And then at the last movement of this piece, I try to invoke the importance of understanding veterans because uh, as a veteran, I, most of my music, I like to connect to that experience of my life. So Into the Liquid uh, came from that inspiration and I hope you all enjoy that.
every time I hear that is awesome, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kimo. We had such a great time yeah. working on that piece. Wow. And it, it's so beautiful. And I think I think what you talked about in terms of uh, your connectedness to bodies of water, um, yeah. I think we all can relate to that in some way. So, yeah, I have well, to catch my breath. Let's, 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 let's continue here. Uh, and maybe, Kimo, briefly, you could talk about the uh, our new commission with you. Um, I, I believe the working title is With Malice Toward None. And uh, right. yeah, why don't you explain a little bit more about your thinking and creativity behind this? Well, first off, I want to thank you and Apollo for even offering uh, me the opportunity to write. And um, when you get a commission, you, you, you want to say something, but you want to say something more than the technique of composition. You want to say something about yourself, about the world you live in, about the people around you. And you want to have a message. You know, it's not always a, uh, it's supposed to be a message about, you know, let's be good people or bad people, but you, you want to uh, communicate something. And when you uh, suggested that it's um, in, in reference to the 250th, uh, I believe it is, uh, anniversary of um, the death of Beethoven? Birth. I'm not sure. The birth, right. I think it's so, it. Yeah, birth. So, yeah. Right. So, I, you know, I, uh, of course, I, uh, before I start a composition, um, especially if it's a commission, I like to know my subject. I, I was commissioned by the West Point Academy to write uh, a piece for the bicentennial. And so I researched West Point and I found through that research that the Buffalo Soldiers, uh, they, they ended their, their, um, their, their regiment in uh, West Point. So I wrote a piece called um, um, Buffalo Soldiers because I, that is what inspired me. And uh, I wanted to connect to uh, West Point in that way. So when you mentioned Beethoven, I, I wanted to do a little bit of research on Beethoven, not so much about his technique of writing, but so much, but who was he and um, how did he look at composition and the kinds of things that his life had gone through. And when I, I did the research, one of the things that really struck me that I felt a real um, kindred spirit uh, with Beethoven is his sense of humanity. He, he, he wants everybody to get along. And as um, erratic as he was, and um, I, I'm, I'm not a historian where I, I know his history that well, but from what I did gather from it, a lot of the things that he, he did, he, he did it with the understanding that he wanted people to live as citizens in this universe as opposed to the conflicts that we seem to, uh, 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 that, that seems to come at us. So when I thought of that, I also thought about a uh, image of a picture that I took in Washington D.C. back in 1980 of the Lincoln Memorial, and it, that this image that I took, which um, um, I didn't know it at the time, but there was a, a um, an individual who was sweeping the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, and um, it was just such a, a juxtaposition of the Lincoln Memorial and this person who was sweeping that I said, you know, here we have this great man being Lincoln and this individual who was sweeping was, was um, you know, a minority. And there was this juxtaposition of we all need to work together because we're all about one. And so I looked at Beethoven from that same perspective that he wanted us through his music. And I think that's why when uh, Napoleon was declared himself emperor, uh, that, that sort of uh, threw him for a, a loop. And he, he kind of scratched his name off the, uh, the score and um, uh, renamed it. And when I saw how much that impacted him, I wanted to make sure that as I expressed myself as a composer, that I would write something that meant as much to me about us coming together as a, as a community of citizens, uh, that somehow the score could do that. And this is why I named it um, with Malice Toward None, which is the name of the, uh, the image, which is available at my uh, website, chemopix.com. <laughs> And thank you, Kim. I also want to mention that, that you do a lot of uh, outreach with veterans groups. Um, we've started to do outreach with veterans groups the last couple of years here in Houston. And um, I don't know if you want to talk just just briefly about your work in that capacity. Uh, yes. Um, in 1998, I went back to Vietnam, and I've gone back about six or seven times. Each time I've gone back, I had conversations about uh, the culture of American music. And I did lectures, and I was a, a, a Fulbright specialist at the time. And every time I went back, there was a, a new 
understanding of the importance of uh, us as uh, Americans reconnecting to the Vietnamese from a different, from a cultural perspective. So I started a program to create cultural relationships between Vietnam and the United States. In 2000 and um, I think it was about 2003, I was with the USO and I was with a band called the Lieutenant Dan Band and we were doing USO shows around the country. And at one point we stopped and a, a Marine came up to me who uh, came out of, uh, he lost both his legs in Afghanistan. Uh, and he said he wished he could get back and had a guitar to play. And I said, is there any way I can help? He said, well, if you can get me a guitar. So uh, at that time, my wife and I, Carol, decided that we would start a program that would provide art resources to VA medical centers around the country. So the United States Veterans Arts Program uh, started in 2003 and we just finished and met our mission as of last year because at this point in time now, the VA understands the importance of um, uh, medical issues that are not always connected to a limb, but also connected to uh, PTSD and things like that. And art and art therapy, music therapy is uh, a, a huge, huge area that they now um, uh, in, incorporate into their, uh, their main mission. So uh, well, Kimo, that was, that that was that. our program, yeah. Uh, Sorry. I'd, I'd love to direct people to your website and more of what you do, your you know composition, your photography, and your veterans outreach. Yes. Um, we need to continue with the program, but you know what we wanted to do with this commission is do something that was a little bit different in terms of celebrating this anniversary of Beethoven, you know, this historic classical composition figure. And uh, I think we're well on that way to do that. This so, this, it, this will be different. Yeah, it will definitely will be different. Thank you so much for being with us, Kimo. Have a be wonderful ready, Terry. evening. Yeah, yeah. Have a wonderful <laughs> evening, Kimo. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, and thank all you guys. Love you. See ya. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye.